welcome and thank you so much for joining me in today's episode, Elizabeth. I am so honored to have you on the Evolve Mindset. Thank you so much for having me, Chels. This is so exciting to unpack everything and to talk to you about what's been going on. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Um, just to get us going, Elizabeth, um, I would love for you to share with the listeners who you are and a little bit about your background. Sure. Okay. So my name is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Willis, and I am an educator. I've been in the field of education for over 20 years. Primarily, I've been a Montessori teacher, which is an alternative um, teaching environment. Um, I've taught preschool ages three to six and uh, lower elementary, first, second, and third. In the Montessori environment, they group the grades together. So the, it's multi-age uh, grouping. So the older children learn from the younger children and the younger children also have something to look up to. So uh, most of my teaching has been done in that group dynamic. Um, and for a while there, I left, I hit a wall uh, about 10 years ago. I left, I got a PhD. I went to graduate school and I got a PhD in early childhood education. And I really tapped into the world of research which mm. I loved and um, really understanding more. And I really looked into teachers and, you know, teacher education programs, as well as focusing on what are called children's self-regulatory skills or self-regulation skills. And that's just essentially, you know, emotionally regulating them, themselves. And that starts um, at a young age. And it starts at a young age where children mirror that what's being mirrored back to them from their adult caregiver. And mm -hmm. those skills develop and continue to develop into adulthood. So what I was looking at in my research was how these self-regulatory skills could be affected by mindfulness, meditation, and other, you know, Eastern practices. So that was, that was my, um, my world of research. And then I had two daughters and I decided to go back into education where I am currently. So um, I'm currently a teacher and I do teach at a variety of different, I would say like teacher education programs. And then most recently I've journeyed into the world of sexuality through um, the Institute New Paradigm Intimacy. So along my experience in life, um, I have always been very into like self-discovery, discovery of self, and just expansion in myself and my self-knowledge. And, you know, talk therapy coupled with spirituality practices, coupled with, um, you know, yoga practice, meditation, and really just like that self-healing journey. And that led me to, I was really pulled towards um, the Institute New Paradigm Intimacy, Really, I didn't know why. Um, be, I just feel that you know the world of sexuality was something that I had yet to discover and yet to tap into. And having two daughters, I did want to bring this knowledge to them. And I know that by bringing this knowledge to them, the best way for me to bring knowledge to anybody else is to embody it myself. So that's kind of my uh, my journey um, up until you know going into the Institute New Paradigm Intimacy School. Mm, what a beautiful journey. I actually didn't know a lot about about you. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> That's great. Um, I love how you bring in your how you did your research um, kind of with the mirror theory stuff when I guess, specifically just like teachers and their students. And would you care to just elaborate about a little bit more for the listeners? Sure. So so the understanding as far as like children's self-regulation -reg skills, it has to do with those are emotional regulation skills and they can be looked at as um, you have this overall umbrella, which is called your executing functioning skills. And that happens in your prefrontal cortex. And these, these EF skills develop all through childhood and into early adolescence where they say that your brain and your EF skills are fully developed by the age of 25. Mm -hmm. So within that umbrella of executive functioning skills, you have what are called um, hot and cold 
uh, skills, okay? And the, the hot coals are more of the emotionally reactive skills. So that category is kind of labeled more as your self-regulatory skills. And that has to do with impulse control, um, you know, deciding there's, there's this classic test in research, which is the marshmallow test, where they pulled a bunch of children together and they said, okay, I'm gonna give you a marshmallow now, but if you wait and you don't eat this marshmallow for, you know, 10 minutes, then I'll give you four more marshmallows, yeah. right? So, mm-hmm. so that's, that's that, that has to do with the self-regulatory skills. And really in early childhood, they, because they are developing these skills, they rely upon adults or caregivers, not only to model the skills, but to kind of be the stronger mirror and to be mm. the, um, to lend those skills to the children. So as you have a child who might be having a tantrum because they don't get the cookie, then, then the adult steps in and, you know, lends the self-regulatory skills. A perfect example is like, you know, if a child goes to touch a hot burning stove, right? Mm-hmm. So the child doesn't know to like pull their hand away. It's the parent that comes in and pulls the child's hand away. So we're giving that impulse control to the child. And um, yeah, so that's kind of, it, it's really, what, what's interesting about this is that that was kind of my, that was my focus in research. And now after journeying with the Institute New Paradigm Intimacy, it's really all connected to the nervous system. Mm, yes. Understanding more about the nervous system and really my own nervous system as far as my ability to face, you know, difficult emotional situations. Because as I was journeying the research, I was looking into meditation, I was looking into mindfulness, and those are all amazing practices, and I honor them. But there's a piece of application that is sometimes missing in the understanding of what do I do as a parent, or what do I do as a teacher when I'm triggered by a child who has these Mm -hmm. reactions? Because you can't always be the stronger mirror, and you're not always in the space to offer that support to the child. And oftentimes, if not, you know, a lot or depending on the circumstances, you are also the one who gets triggered and you are also kind of reacting in that same way that the child is reacting. So coming back to what we learned um, at the Institute, it's really, again, more about learning how to be in our bodies and Mm -hmm. regulating our nervous system and regulating, being in tune with our self-regulatory skills and tapping into those through our nervous system and through the regulation of our nervous system by being more in our body and less in our mind. So if you look at like a child and an adult, a child is really in their body their whole time because they're very Mm -hmm. like illicit in their aliveness and they're just learning and they learn through exploration and they learn through these things. And the adult is really more in their mind than in their body. Right. Mm-hmm. So the adult, while the adult might be reacting to the child who's, you know, having a temper tantrum, the adult is reacting, you know, as a trigger and it's not, and not necessarily they're, they're more in their mind and they're not in their body. So now what we're looking at is, you know, how can you really support children in their aliveness and through the development of these skills and what do we need as adults, as parents, as teachers to embody in order to provide and be that stronger mirror and to lend those that those self-regulatory skills to the children. Mm, yeah, no, I can definitely 100% agree with all of that. Um, I'm personally a mom. My son is in middle school now. And I've, I can't even express how many stories that my son has come to me. And he's told me like, mom, I don't think my teacher likes me. I'm like, well, why do you think that, son? And basically he's saying like his teacher has like just like yelled at him or his teacher has like been really like snarky or just like snapping at him, which don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming his teacher whatsoever. They have a really tough job. All you any any teacher is listening. You guys have really hard jobs. I could not do that at all. (laughs) But it, it translates differently to the children. And I mean, I'm sure you've had experiences in situations like that. Um, What would you do in a situation like that? Yeah, so for sure, that's a great question. So it's really what I've been journeying and part of my journey in integrating what we learned at the New Paradigm Intimacy and about being in your body and regulating my nervous system 
is about how am I going to apply this to school? Like where do, where does, you know, education and sexuality mix where it's not like sex ed? And really what it is, it's in that underlying understanding and, and tapping into that underlying current and that life force um, and that aliveness that we have. So mm -hmm. as a teacher, when you are really in alignment with yourself and you're really attuned to yourself, you can support yourself, okay? And you, not only can you support yourself um, through difficult situations and, and work with your energy through these difficult situations, but you are, you're able to control your energy so it's not leaking all the time um, because as, as a teacher and even as a parent, we're constantly giving, right? So we're giving unnecessary energy away all the time. And mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why we feel so drained and why we're so short sometimes. So you tap into that and then you also tap into with that aliveness, like what you are actually, what, what you are capable of and what you can handle at that moment. And recognizing that we can't handle, especially as teachers and mothers, like we can't handle everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like there's a conditioning in society that says like, just because I'm a teacher, I'm like put on this pedestal of somebody who knows everything and somebody who's all patient and mm -hmm. somebody, you know, who disseminates information and like a role model in society and I can't do anything wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. And as a mother, you know, the conditioning in society is that, you know, I'm always going to be there for my child. I'm going to love my child and nurture my child and, you know, make my child beautiful lunches and all these things. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's about dismantling those myths and that conditioning and really owning up to what each person as an individual is capable of doing. But what each person is capable of doing is, again, we don't really know that until we tap into our own aliveness and we tap into ourselves. So to bring it back to that question that you asked about like what to do in those difficult situations, what I've learned as I've been able to tap into my aliveness and as I've been able to really be in more in tune with my alignment or my alignment is with these situations, um, the first thing that I do is I drop into my body. So like, for example, you know, someone calls my name, you know, Miss Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth, and I'm in the middle of doing something else. Like I, I close my eyes, I put my hand on my heart and I just feel for a few seconds. And my students are now used to this because now they like see me with my <laughs> eyes closed. And I just feel the sensations. Like I feel the irritation. I feel the frustration, whatever sensation is there. I feel that. And I really like, I, I just sit with that for maybe like 10 seconds because our body just needs to be feel, felt mm -hmm. and loved. And that's, it just wants to be seen just as much as every other part of us. So if we, you know, tap into our body and, you know, feel those sensations. So that's the first thing that I usually do. And then the other piece that I do is then after I've, I've just been with that for a few seconds, that's, that kind of creates that pause you know, that we're kind of, that we need in order mm -hmm. to then address something. Now I can't hold space for my students and I can't be there for my students at some times when I'm feeling completely overwhelmed, if I'm feeling very stressed, you know? So there are times when there will come to me and they'll say, Miss Elizabeth, and I'll put my hand on my heart, or maybe I won't even make it that far. And I just look at them and I say, I'm sorry, but I'm not available for you right now. And it's just as, it's just as, you know, brief as that. And mm -hmm. I, they have to wait and, you know, I need to be with myself or I need to be in whatever other, whatever else I'm dealing with. Um, so that's really how I, I work a lot through that is like dismantling the conditioning and placing realistic expectations and what I know yes. I'm capable of doing, right? as well as tapping into myself and tapping into my sensations that arise when these difficult situations that are taxing on a teacher or a parent arise. Mm, I love that. And something that's coming true to me right now is like that codependent relationship we see with um, child and mother or student and teacher. I feel like this is an amazing lesson and opportunity for teachers to, like you said, kind of do the self-regulation piece, but also to kind of to take out that codependency. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Absolutely. 
And one of the things that I've, I've journeyed with and I've integrated into my class this year is exactly that. Because, you know, if you mm. really look at the school system and the structure of the school system, it's set up for, in fear. Okay, mm -hmm. and set up in that codependent pattern. And that codependent pattern is set up so early in childhood where children are like almost, you know, from, you know, toddler, you know, the age of like toddlerhood, you know, they are taught to give away their power to adults. Yes. And it becomes conditioned. Right. Mm -hmm. And so so then as children grow up, then they all of a sudden become adults and we expect them to be comfortable in their power and to be comfortable around others power where mm -hmm. for their entire childhood and their through their entire entire education system, we've taught them to fear power because we've placed teachers above. Right. And mm -hmm. that is that codependency where whenever you have a relationship where you have one person that holds power above the other person. Yeah. Right? So what we're looking to do in like the new era in education is to dismantle that system and that structure in the way that things have set up. And what you want to do is you want to create more of like a parallel environment where the teacher and the student are on the same, you know, they, they have equal power. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about this is that you can't just give a child who's been used to giving away their power, power without teaching them how to use their power. Because when you give a child power, 